from Hoodie Hood, me, Sock, neighborhood, rolling 40 Crip. We in Southeast San Diego in the 40s. Just like our uh, counterparts in LA, they got four sides, we got four sides, 1579. It's 41st, 45th, 47th, and 49th. Uh, we got representatives of that all out here from each street. I grew up over here, uh, right here, around the corner on 49th Street, as well as on Morrison, which is in between 41st and 42nd. This street, 49th Street. This is the end of the hood right here. Like, as soon as you get to Euclid, we got Horton Elementary right here. A lot of homies attending this school. Several homies right here went right there. Like I said, I went to school on 45th in the Mecca, like right there in the middle of this shit. But uh, homies went right there. You got Gompers Park right here. Once you cross Euclid, you have what they call uh, it's like two or three streets, Little Africa, Piru. And you got Emerald Hills up in the hills from that. Um, further east, you got Skyline, O'Farrell Park, Parkside, that's all that way. Uh, Lincoln Park right here, the Four Corners. Brim's over there, um, well, like this way. And you got West Coast, 20s and 30s. And then a bunch of essays in between. Market Street, like last time, the homies that was with us, shout out to Market Street. Um, Logan, Shelltown. Lomita, Encanto, Paradise Hills, Southeast Locos, uh, shit, Lomas, Sherman. Yeah, it's, it's a lot more, but those are the main ones. TNS right here. And while you was growing up, did you have any positive relationships with some of these other neighborhoods, whether they were black or brown? Yeah. Which, which ones did you interact with the most? Uh, Market Street, as far as another race. Market Street, um, we got OKBs right here, they Asian. They actually don't get along with Market Street, but that's their beef, and we all in the same hood. Um, I got a lot of homies from East Side, Radio East Side. Yeah, that's up that way across the bridge, going towards East San Diego, and then Crips, East Diego Mob, Linda Vista, West Coast. Uh, I got Dombo homies and all that too. You know. Now, um, what's it like? You cool with Market, and you cool with OKB? Does, does Market ever kind of? have a certain feeling about y'all still cool with OKB, but we going at it? That's their business. Ain't got nothing to do with us. That's their business. Like I said, we all from the same community. We all go to the same schools, whether it be Gompers, whether it be Choyas, uh, Horton, whatever. So we all, it's a melting pot over here. And we got the Samoan homies right here. They from the set from 4-5. You know what I mean? So that's what this community is. It's just a melting pot of all of that. What's it like? having a, a foreign country just a few minutes away because most of America don't live on border towns. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, a lot of people go over there to party. That's that's most homies, um, like they first party experience because they used to go over there at 16, 17 and they getting drunk over there. I never personally been over there. I don't fuck around over there. I don't know, they got cartels and all that shit. But a lot of people say it's lit, so. So all these years you never decided to venture over no, there? No, man, nah. Nah, a lot of people want me to go over there, but I don't, I don't fuck around. I don't think I would go either if I lived here because yeah. you just, I'd just be hearing too many crazy yeah. stories. Yeah, and then when you go over there, you know, you're going to run into who you run into. So you don't want to be squabbling up over there and going to jail over there. So Now, have you ever had any homies from the 40s actually get caught up and go to jail in Mexico? Not that I know of. A lot of homies been in fights, but I don't know about nobody going to jail. They usually, you know how they do when they catch you, pat your pockets. That's how they do it. That's how niggas be getting up out of that shit. Take me back to your first exposure to the neighborhood. Uh, really, it was just um, my mom and having, you know, that was who she associated with. And just from a pup, all the parties that we would have, you know, they would be there. I remember seeing niggas back in the days with low riders and jerry curls and all that. And I'm looking at them like, these are my mom's friends. These is uncles and shit like that. But they was crips, you know? 20s, 30s, 40s, all that. That was Crips. So was your mom an actual Crip too, or just hanging out? You could say so, yeah, for the most part, yeah. I don't really think she tried to stop it. She kind of just knew like it was what it was. And then she started seeing me. She's buying me these clothes. She's buying me the blue dickies and the blue chucks and shit like that. So she knew what it was. But even like here we are years later, uh, you guys never had that conversation about, you know. Well, she passed away when I was 14, so. Yeah, so she didn't. She saw me like starting. She passed away in January, January 29, 2002. So she saw me gang banging. I had went to juvenile hall, and it was really nothing she could do because she was already on her demise. So. 
Okay. And my older brother, yeah, he he jumped off the porch before me, so. Okay, how yeah. many how many years older is your brother? Three. Okay. Yeah, Tiny right. Stick. Shout out Tiny Stick. I was always following my brother around anyway, so he already knew what time it was. Like, he did it. I didn't do it right away, but I was always trying to go with him. When he'd be with the homies in the set, he'd be with my cousin over there, Jukebox. These niggas was already gangbanging in the late 90s. And I'm just looking at it like, shit, I want to do what my brother do. So if he was a doctor, I probably would have been a doctor. He just happened to be a hustler. So. so during these years, I guess it's uh, late 90s, early 2000s, uh, where was your father at? Uh, prison, in and out. My dad from uh, Pyro, from Skyline. Yeah. And what's that like? You got a father that's a blood. Um, he's straight. I mean, it ain't like that. He don't, he ain't tripping or nothing like that. We straight. So you got family over there then? Yeah. And yeah. do you ever interact with that family? Yeah. What's that like? It's normal. We don't, we don't talk about no gangbanging shit. It's normal. You get to middle school, uh, junior high, middle school. What school was that and what was that like? Crazy part about it, I wanted to go to school right here at Gompers in the hood. My brother was going there. He was getting into so much shit because the Damus don't have a middle school as far as Lincoln and Emerald Hills and Brim, so they got to come to Gompers, which is a middle school and a high school. So the homies is going up. So my mom was like, you're not going there. She wanted something better. She sent me to a school in Paradise Hills, which is over there where the, where the Pyrus is at. But check this out. When I go there, my nigga, Baby Ty, was going there with me. And my nigga uh, Bussiano from these Dago Mob, shout out to Cuz. We was the only Crips there. So when I went, it was like the height of them beefing with other bloods. So when we went, it was more so like psh, they wasn't even really tripping on us being Crips because they was at full-fledged war with the other bloods. So I got a lot of homies from over there that I'm still cool with to this day. So you went to that school all three years? Uh, Shit, middle school, a little bit of high school. Oh, it's a combination? Yeah, it's from 12th grade to... I mean, 6 to 12. Okay. So I went there from 6 to halfway through the 10th grade. Caught a violation. I was already on probation. And uh, got locked up for about four months. They kicked me out. They was going to kick me out anyways because I wasn't really doing nothing there. I'm ditching school, fighting, smoking weed, all kind of shit. So they was already about to kick me out. I had a meeting set up. But I ended up going to court before that. They locked me up, and then they kicked me out. So when I get out, I got to go to probation schools and continuation schools and shit like that. So. It was, it was a lit school at that time. Like, now it's more calm. I heard you got to audition to go into school because it's School of Creative and Performing Arts. I wasn't creative and didn't perform at all. I didn't do shit as well of, as a lot of people. So now they make you audition to make sure that that's what you're going to that school for and you ain't just a fucker. Because back then it was all kind of shit going on. And like I said, I was cool with a lot of them dudes, but I wasn't cool with the niggas that was coming up there after school trying to get at the females. I wasn't cool with them. So I got to be on point with them because they like, who this nigga walking out to school with this blue rag hanging out his pocket or these blue dickies on? They like, who that? But the niggas at the school was always like, nah, that's the homie, that's the bro. So these are blood saying that? Yeah, Pyrus. Yeah. All the Pyrus. Yeah. So talk about how th this the, the school is a, is all Pyru, all blood, but you were able to go there and with, I'm su assuming, very little problems. Yeah. How is that possible? Because like I said, they was in a full-fledged conflict, you know, with other blood gangs so that was their focus at the time me me being a crip wasn't really a priority for them you so, know so sometimes some hoods is more mad at another blood than another crip yeah why were you on probation in the first place um i had like a little assault and uh they tried to pin a robbery on me because the dude had a cd player we didn't want the cd player we just whooped his ass because he was he was mad dogging so yeah and they, they just put on, you You took the CD player and they made that a robbery? We never took the CD player. He told them we tried to take it, he ran. So I was on probation for that for a couple of years. I kept smoking weed, getting kicked out of school. And every time I would go to um, court to see if I can get off. All right. So uh, yeah, basically they had just, they had bring up all the shit. Every time I get stopped by the police, like, oh, you doing this, you doing that. I had about seven or eight dirty P tests for weed, wouldn't stop. Um, yeah, they gave me a six-month violation. I did four months off of that. So what was the continuation school like? Because it's everybody is probably from somewhere at that school. Uh, the probation school, yeah. It was more so everybody on probation. They treated it like jail. You couldn't wear certain uh, colors. You couldn't have certain shit. If so, like say I wore some shoes like this. They had taken them from me. They had put them, neighborhood. They had put them 
in the locker and lock them away and give me some juvenile hall sandals for the day. If I wear a shirt with something on it, they'll make me wear a juvenile hall shirt. There was probation officers at the school. If you violate, they'll take you to jail from right there. Thanks for watching StreetTV.net. If you're not subscribed, please hit that button below and click the bell to receive alerts and notifications. Like and comment below to give us your feedback and be sure to watch the two related videos to the right. If you want to support this platform or follow us on social media, visit the links in the description and listen to our weekly podcast, The Gangster Chronicles, every Thursday. And thanks for watching StreetTV.net.